So as quite a few of you may have realised with our current situation that there's no yarn shows happening. So I decided to set up in my garden. I've only set up half of the stall today. Don't really have room to fit it all in in my little space. So I'm going to go through in little individual videos for you of the items that I've got out on display today. I'm going to do a series of short little videos so that you don't have to sit here for hours on end listening to me waffle on. You can pick and choose either which items you might wish to look at. You might only be interested in the double knitting. You might only be interested in the buttons. So I'm going to do them all in little short videos for you. See you soon. Hi, my name's Nikki and I'm the dyer behind Alien Threads. Thanks for joining us at this virtual wool monty. This weekend, it's a shame not to be able to do it in public, but this is a brilliant way to be able to look and see what everyone else is doing. I'd like to show you some of the things that I would have been bring, bringing to the wool monty this weekend, which were available on my Etsy shop. I dye with natural dyes, which is something that I've been doing since my mum first showed me about 40 years ago although it's only in the last couple of years I've been trying to actually sell some new ones as a little business. I love knitting in all sorts of different yarns and therefore I've got quite a wide variety available. So there's different weights, there's chunky, double knit, full ply and lace weight wools and lots of different bases. So some of them are pure wool, we've got some wool and silk, alpaca, cashmere, mohair, all sorts of things. So something for everybody and lots of pretty summery colours. One of the things that I would have been bringing to the Wool Monty were some yarn duos. So this is where I've paired together a couple of skeins of wool which tone beautifully and would be lovely made into an article together. So for example, this pairing is a merino single skein and a merino bamboo skein which have both been dyed with kutch, so tone beautifully. Here's one which is um, eucalyptus, so there's a merino singles and a kid silk lace which could either be held together to make something or alternate stripes of each wool or a variety of those things to make something. I also have some new sock sets where there's a 100 gram skein of wool together with a 25, 20 gram skein sorry in a contrasting colour or a toning colour so that you can make different toes and different tops to your socks. As you can see, I also dye embroidery threads. Here we've got a variety of different threads, so some very thick, there's some silk barrette there, or um, thinner, suitable for a different type of embroidery, that's SS8 silk, mulberry silk dyed with logwood. There are some lovely boucle yarns too, which would be beautiful couch down. And there's also some wool and some cotton yarns dyed. These ones are dyed with cochineal, with madder and with onion. I have a range of project bags which are made from fabrics which I've dyed myself from natural dyes. Um, all sorts of things and some of them have got um, panels of felt on them as well. I love to dye minis too um, and I've got some new mini sets on my Etsy shop Allium Threads. This one is a is a mix of spring early summer colours and there's nettle, dock, anato and some other things there to make a beautiful toning set. These really are the shades of spring, I think, this beautiful green spring that we've had. Um, gorgeous set there. And then this one, where they've all been dyed with the same dye. So all five of these have been dyed with madder. And you can see they all tone beautifully together. I also dye some inspiration packs um, where I use the same 
dye stuff to dye a number of different things. So these are great for embroidery or felting. So this one's got various types of fabric in. Most of it's silk, has some lovely silk velvet there. It's got some silk rods, some silk fibres, some Wensleydale locks, some embroidery thread and various things which all tone beautifully together. And here's a set which have all been dyed with logwood to make a lovely range of mauves. Something I was excited to be able to launch at the Woolmonty was my advent calendar for this year. So I've decided to do a couple of different ones. There's a couple of choices of four ply weight. So you could have um, a mix of two yarns, which are four ply and suitable for socks. Or there's a choice of four yarns, which are again suitable for socks. And this one has got a lovely sparkly one in it. And I'm also going to do some lace weight advent calendars too. So that again, there's a choice. Um, this pairing is Kid Silk and Merino Singles. And this one is a choice of seven different yarns. There's a couple of fluffy ones, a Kid Silk and um, a Merino Singles, and then a couple of um, cashmere and alpaca ones there too. So that's like the selection box for Christmas of yarn. And those are available either as 12 or 24 on my Etsy shop, so please have a look at those. Hi everyone, my name's Beth, I'm the dyer at Beehive Yarns, and uh, just doing a short video today on the request of the ladies at the Wool Monty to let you know a bit more about myself and my business and to show you some of the things that are going to be going uh, into the online Monty next weekend. Uh, so those of you that don't know, uh, the Wool Monty is a yarn festival here in the UK, usually based in Sheffield. Like most events this year, unfortunately, um, isn't able to go ahead in person. However, it is going online, um, which is fantastic because it means that those people that weren't necessarily able to travel to it in Sheffield are able to, to join in and see lots of the uh, fantastic vendors who are lined up. So. Uh, Brilliant work from the Wilmonte team there to, to enable this to happen. So yeah, I hope you um, have lots of fun looking at the other vendor videos uh, prior to next week. We've got a week to go, so whilst I'm going to be showing you some yarn today, and you can see I've got quite a bit behind me, uh, my house is absolutely full of it, all drying at the moment, so there is going to be a lot more stuff than I'll show you today, um, but here's a sneak peek. Um, next weekend I will be doing some Instagram live videos over both Saturday and Sunday, uh, which will be an opportunity for me to show you a few more yarns, but also for you to answer and ask me any questions if you've got any uh, queries at all while we're running up to it. So yeah, okay. Um, bit about myself first, so uh, so I'm Beth, I've been dyeing yarn for just over three years now. I launched Beehive Yarns on 1st of June 2017, so yeah, not a, quite a long time ago, it doesn't feel it, it's gone absolutely very, very quickly. Um, in that time, um, I've moved from Etsy and quite recently onto my own website, which is uh, beehiveyarns.com, uh, so yeah, uh, and recently as well, I've introduced some new yarn bases um, into the shop. Uh, which I'd like to show you today. So I've always had a mixture of sort of lace weight, four ply and fingering and DK yarn. They tend to sort of differ slightly over the year with seasonality. Um, the majority of my yarns are, are merino or merino blends. Uh, so I've got some BFL to show you today. Uh, so that's a new one for me as well. Um, all of my yarn bases are named after um, Beehive hairdo wearers from the 1960s, so I've got a Bardot base, Audrey, Ronnie Spector, etc. You get the picture. Um, my new bases don't have their names yet, so I think I'll keep you waiting until next weekend till, uh, till I disclose what they're going to be called. Okay, so the first one I want to show you is uh, Surrey Alpaca, uh, which is beautiful, fluffy, um, super soft yarn uh, and lace weight. Um, I did do a sort of 
quiz really for my uh, customers quite recently over what the yarn bases they would like to see beehive stock and this was absolutely number one. Um, it's quite similar to mohair I guess in the sense that it is very fine, very fluffy and knits up lovely with other yarns as well. Um, I think that the main differences between Surrey and mohair would be that Surrey's meant to be a lot more um, acceptable on sensitive skin, so not quite so itchy perhaps if it's something that you suffer from with mohair. Um, I would say it's slightly softer to work with um, and it's also slightly more textured when it knits up. So I've been working on um, Love Note sweater here in the colourway that I've just shown you. Uh, and this is a mixture of the Surrey Alpaca Lace and a BFL 4-ply. Um, and yeah, it's just super, super fluffy, lovely halo, and I would say a very slightly more textured finish um, than mohair lace. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely want to have a look at if you're into kind of fluffy yarns. And I'm going to have several, several new colourways and existing colourways um, on the Surrey Alpaca in the shop. So this one is Jaded Rose, which you can see here. Um, I've also got that colourway here on my uh, BFL 4-ply base, which I'll explain a bit more about in a mo. Um, and yeah, lots of other ones. I've got um, another, new, another new summer colourway here called Sweet Magnolia, which is sort of a vanilla colour with some green and burgundy and pink speckles. Um, I don't know if anyone's been watching or has watched the Sweet Magnolias TV series on Netflix. Um, I would say it's a bit of a guilty pleasure, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is where the name came from for that. Um, also on the Surrey, um, you'll see that my summer summer ways, I like that word, summer colourways are sort of very uh, rose and garden inspired, very much kind of for my evening walks really, um, but yeah, sort of summer gardens, summer, summer walks down the river, that kind of vibe really. Um, so here's some more here. So there we've got damask, which is kind of like rose petals with the jaded rose. And this is honeycomb, which is literally the exact same colour as cinder toffee. It's coming up slightly brighter than it is in real life on the video. Um, but you can see that they kind of all work quite nicely together. Um, and these will be available on lots of bases. You can see some of them just behind me, not just the Surrey. So as I said, my second new yarn base is uh, Blue Face Leicester 4-ply. Um, so this is 75% um, BFL, 25% nylon. So perfect for socks, um, but also perfect for, for sweaters, for jumpers, uh, and for any accessories, really. It's a real kind of workhorse of a yarn. Um, I would say that BFL yarn, if you're not used to using it, to compare it to merino, it, it's slightly more uh, textured, so it's got more of a toothy feel to it, which means it's perfect for co for colour work, um, and it's just very durable finish, but still very soft. So there it is on jaded rose, and here it is on another new colourway, um, as yet to be named, um, which yeah, very much sort of inspired by rivers and streams during the summer. Um, so that's the BFL four ply, and that's the same colourway there on the Surrey alpaca, which I think would look beautiful knit up together. Um, the third new yarn base that I have for you uh, this week is actually a sport weight yarn. So this again is BFL, this is 100% BFL superwash. Um, sport weight yarn is something that I don't think we see quite so much of in the UK as potentially in other countries, um, although there have been lots of lovely patterns released in sport recently, which has kind of driven me to look, look it up. Um, not least the Jupiter Crop by Caitlin at uh, Boyland Knitworks, which I'm obsessed with, the Jupiter Crop. Um, I'm having a sample knit up for me actually at the moment, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So yeah, Sport is new to, new to Beehive. Um, it's 262 metres per 100 grams, so you get slightly more than you would in DK, uh, and less than a four ply, so it's very much in between the two. Um, and as it's 100% BFL, it has that toothy finish. So again, perfect for colour work. It's got a slightly more rustic feel than a merino yarn has. Um, so this is it on a new colourway here, which is very variegated. But equally, I've got it dyed up on lots of tonal yarns. So as I said, I'm loving the Jupiter crop. So I've put some kits together. This is the first kit, which is the, uh, the colourways that I'm actually having my sample knit up in. So you can see a lovely sort of uh, brown gorgeous teal there and some peaches so that's kit number one and the second Jupiter crop kit has got much more 
sort of vibrant tones underpinned by this dark charcoal cemetery gates here so those two kits will be in the shop at the weekend um, but as always all my tonal yarns are available on die to order basis which means that you can you can choose whichever ones you like and you can choose whichever yarn base that I offer um, and, and have them dyed up for you my usual turnaround is sort of two to three weeks I obviously try and do them as quickly as I can uh, so yeah lots of options there um, the last thing I guess I wanted to show you today was my uh, sweater. So this is the Sunset Highway, which I'm sure you're probably quite familiar with by Caitlin Hunter. This actually took me nearly two years to knit. So um, hopefully you're not quite as bad as I am at putting things down when there's like half a sleeve remaining that you need to knit. But I'm really, really pleased I managed to finish it during lockdown. Um, and um, yeah, a few people who've sort of seen me post on Instagram have asked about the yarns that I use. So I've got those going into the shop this weekend as well. So the main body of the sweater is from my Gasoline Alley colourway. That's named after a Rod Stewart song. Um, and as you can see, lots of different colours in there, which it really makes for a very, very speckled um, effect. So sort of bronzes, gold, teal, turquoise, Gasoline Alley. Uh, the golden colour is Marigold, which is a yarn I actually launched with Beehive three years ago and uh, isn't going anywhere. It's, it's certainly one of my favourites. So it's a lovely, vibrant mustard and it's got some sort of green, green and brown speckles in there. So that's the golden colour. Um, and I do have uh, Gunsmoke, which is the, the variegated grey that's just sort of uh, used around the top. So again, you'll find these there in the shop next week. Um, that's all that I was going to show you today. Um, very limited on time and I know there's hundreds of vendor videos uh, waiting for you to have a look at. As I said, I'll be on Instagram stories uh, next weekend. The Wool Monty Online is happening on the 13th and 14th of June. So do tune in, do check out their website um, and, and check out Facebook and Instagram and check out Beehive's website and Instagram too if you want to see some more videos. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching today. Bye bye. Okay, so managed to turn it around now. So we have, or what you would have found at the show, we have packs of mini skeins. These are perfect for adding little pops of colour to your project, maybe for a heel or a cuff. Each skein is 20 grams nylon sock for these ones. There's lots of different ones. I quite like mini skeins. They, um, I tend to hold my interest for a really short period of time when it comes to colour work and then I like to be able to mix and match other colours. What else have we got? These are the Jules collection for the solids. Callum just dyed these ones actually. These are his favourite shades. So he dyes them in all of those. They're lovely. Now this section here, this is your Highlands and Islands collection. Collection of yarns that I dyed based on Bonnie Scotland, would you believe? But yeah. They're lovely. These are all dyed on a BFL nylon. Really, really nice, robust yarn, but still without losing its softness. I think that one might be my favourite. I change my favourite daily, to be fair. These are all sock weight yarns. I'm just going to show you some of my favourites, I think, because if I was to stand here and show you each and every one, then we'd be here for some time. I do like this one. So this one is Night Sky. It's beautiful, beautiful, dark, dark navy with high pops of colour. Really, really nice. Another one of my favourites. So this is dyed on a yak. This is Yak Nylon, Birds of Paradise. I absolutely adore this one. Camera is not showing it to its glory at all. But I love it. So there, yeah, there's all these. This one is one of Callum's. So for those of you who don't know, my eldest son Callum dyes his own colourways and we give all of the money to charity every month. It's a way, because he is autistic, it is a way for him to stay calm and to release some of those tensions that he has. And plus it, we're doing good, so we're giving to charity, so which is fabulous. This is Lord Freezer. It is predominantly purple with splashes of speckles of all the colours. How he does it, I will never know, because he's definitely better at it than I am, and he's only 10. We have all of these, all of these. There is by far more sock weight yarn in the shop than anything else. We also stock project bags. So these project bags, 
These are hand sewn by my glorious seamstress, Akna She Kat is amazing. We have them in loads of different fabrics. We also do hook rolls. You can see one up there. This here is a little notion pouch. They all come in, you can get them in all the fabrics. So you can have the whole set if you wish. We obviously stock DK yarns. Again, mm, I think maybe this one might be my favorite. I quite like that one. Oh, or maybe this one. Yeah, Fantasia's maybe predominantly one I would go for, I think. It's got all the colors in it and it's got little speckles of hints of other colors. Another base we stock, Fairy Wings. So Fairy Wings is a beautiful heavy four ply and it is kid silk, mohair and polyamide. You can see all the details on the label. And oh, I wish you could feel it. It's gloriously soft, beautiful. Mimics the idea of holding two skeins together of a sock weight and a lace, to be fair. It's beautiful, beautiful. We have some Aran. Again, all of these are available on the website. We've got a silk collection. So we stock a base 50-50 silk. So it's 50-50 merino silk in sock weight. And it's just gloriously soft. It drapes beautifully. This cardigan here was done in it. And it's just lovely. Absolutely stunning. And this is our yak silk. I do love yak. I love how it takes the colour. It takes the colour so differently to a, a white or cream based yarn. Because the yarn comes grey from the, from the yak. So it makes it very, very deep jewel toned when it takes the dye. Because actually that yellow is more green. But actually to get that, you use neon yellow, would you believe? It's glorious. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And we have, that's the jewels collection down here. And then this, again, like I say, is the cherub. So if they've, if they've dyed yarn, they, have, they do have signature colorways that they do for themselves. And they also have... Every, one, every once in a while, they'll have a one-off, like this, for instance. You see? Isabella did that one. My children put me to shame, to be fair. We also stock the lace fluff. Oh, this is so trendy right now. Everybody wants this right now. So, yeah. That's just a very small sample of some of the things you can expect to see where we are at the show. But like I say, it's better that we all stay safe. And... I hope that we can come and see you next year. But we will be running a promo over the weekend that the show would have been on and we will have exclusive colorways. So do make sure you check out the Facebook page and the Instagram feed because there'll be goodies to be had all over the weekend. Stay safe, guys. Bye for now. Hi. I'm Ishrat and I'm the dyer behind Fruitful Fusion. Um, I often get asked about where I get my colourway inspiration from, so I thought I'd tell you a bit about that. Sometimes inspiration comes from the memory of a place I visited or lived in. And sometimes I start with a specific image in mind. Sometimes I start with the colours I want to use in a variegated yarn and then do the maths. Other times I start with a base colour of something I really love and then go crazy with the speckles. I really enjoy dyeing yarn and seeing the different colours emerge. I love experimenting and trying out new techniques, but one of the best things is when you ask me to come up with colour combinations for your projects. That is just so much fun, but I will have to leave that for another time.
Hello everyone and welcome to my Will Monty video. I am Helen and I am the dyer behind Giddy Yarns and I'm based up in Dundee, Scotland. Um, I wanted to use this video firstly to introduce you to me and to introduce you to the things that inspire my colourways and also to um, introduce you to the collections that I'm going to be having in the shop over the weekend of the Will Monty. I am inspired by anything to do with nostalgia. That is my real passion. Um, whether that is childhood memories, whether that is books, stories of the past, even sweets, um, if it invokes that feeling of um, reminiscence, that feeling of nostalgia, then it inspires me and it really inspires my creativity. Um, and you'll see that that kind of comes across in the collections that I tend to put in the shop. Um, I'm going to be having three collections in the shop over the weekend of the Will Monty. Um, there's my bedtime story collection, my flower fairies collection, um, which is kind of new, um, and also my Cornwall collection. Um, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to take a little bit of time to kind of go into a bit more detail about each of those collections. Um, and also at the end, hopefully talk about a few kits for patterns um, that I've got in the shop as well. Um, and hopefully that will all be interspersed with fancy videos, fingers crossed. So the Bedtime Story Collection came about from my love of reading as a child, but also from my two boys. Um, I've got two boys, a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and they love a bedtime story. I mean, what child doesn't? Um, but we've been reading more and more of my childhood favourites to Arthur, and it really inspired me to create a collection. So the collection contains five main colourways. There is um, George's Marvellous Medicine, The Railway Children, The Secret Garden, The Sea of Adventure and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And they will be available as full 100 gram skeins, but also available as mini skeins for the first time. And in January, I also had to create a colourway inspired by one of my favourite children's stories, and that is Winnie the Pooh. Um, it was Winnie the Pooh Day in January and as a result of that I released um, Pooh Sticks as a colourway um, inspired by the classic um, game that they play of dropping the stick under the bridge um, and also a bunch of minis inspired by my favourite Winnie the Pooh characters as well. In 2018 I ran a Flower Fairies yarn club um, with each month being inspired by an image from um, the classic Flower Fairies collection and beautiful fairy images um, and a lot of you have asked me to bring that back. Now my style of dyeing has changed a lot in the last two years so what I decided to do is revamp it and bring it up in line with my current style of dyeing um, and that's what I've done. So I have picked five of my favourite flower fairies from the club, the Daisy Fairy, the Lavender Fairy, the Primrose Fairy, the Cornflower Fairy and the Acorn Fairy and I have dyed them up to launch as a new flower fairies collection. Um, they will be available again as 100 gram skeins and they will also be available as mini skeins. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that I've done it. it. I know many of you missed out on the club because you didn't know me at the time. I was a relatively new dyer at the time. And this has really given me an opportunity to bring those colourways back, but much more in line with my current style. The Cornwall 
Cornwall collection is really special to me. I grew up in Cornwall, despite the fact that I now live in Scotland, about as far away as I could possibly get. And in May of this year, I should have been going down to Cornwall um, for a yarn show and also to visit my family. But obviously, um, the current situation and the pandemic prevented that. And as a result, I decided to dye up a yarn collection inspired by my favourite things about Cornwall. Um, so the collection consists of three colourways and also a bundle of minis. Um, there is cream tea, which is, of course, a Cornish classic. And we won't get into which way around the jam and cream go. Um, there is also Kynance, which is inspired by my absolute favourite beach in Cornwall, down on the Lizard. It is the most stunning beach. Um, and then the third colourway is called Flora Day, and that is inspired by a really special event that happens in my hometown on the 8th of May every single year. Um, it's really difficult to explain, but if you have a Google of Helston Flora Day or have a look on YouTube, even better, you'll find some amazing videos that kind of explain it better than I can. And then there are um, five minis in the mini bundle, each inspired by my favourite things, from saffron cake and tin mines to um, the coastal path and Roskilly's ice cream, by far the best ice cream in Cornwall, um, and even the fact that seagulls always steal your pasty on the beach. And I just wanted to talk about two kits that I'm going to be putting together. The patterns are available on Ravelry, not through me, um, but I am putting together um, packs specifically for these patterns. Um, they are two shawls which were both designed using the yarn available in the kits. Um, the first one is the Sea Cravings shawl, which was de designed by Therese of Brixton Pearl, and it is a gorgeous three colour faded shawl, absolutely massive and cosy and really lovely. Um, and I've got the blue kits available and I've also got that available in grey kits as well. And the second pattern is the Gentle Waves Shawl, which is a brand new pattern released by Thistle Glen Designs. And she designed it using my Sea of Adventure colourway and my Lost at Sea colourway. And again, it's a really, really gorgeous pattern, um, a lovely kind of gentle lace, a really, really nice shape. And again, I will have kits available for both of those patterns. Before I leave you, I wanted to just talk about bases. Um, I am happy to dye up any of my colourways, any of my 100 gram colourways across any of my yarn bases. Um, they may only have been shown in the footage on my merino nylon base because that's all I had dyed up and dry at the time I recorded the video. But I currently dye on four four ply bases and one DK base. So I've got a 75-25 merino nylon, a 80% merino, 20% bamboo, um, a 100% merino single ply and a 100% high twist blue faced Leicester. And then I also dye on a 100% um, DK base. Oh, sorry, 100% DK, 100% merino DK base. Um, so yeah, if any of those 100 gram colourways aren't available on the particular base that you would want, feel free to drop me a message and I will see what I can do. Anyway, I better leave it there before this video gets ridiculously long because I do like to talk. Um, but thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for joining me for the virtual Wool Monty and thank you so much for the Wool Monty for sorting out a virtual show when we can't all be there together in person. Um, I will be there for Wool Monty 2021 and I am hopeful that I will be able to meet you all in person then and things will be back to some level of normality hopefully. But for now, thank you very, very, very much. Bye! <laughs>
Hi, I'm Sean of Glendale Fibres and uh, we've been trading for two years. Um, the warm on was going to be our first wool show. Obviously that's not going to happen. So I thought I would show you a few of my colourways and talk about what we do. Um, so I'll start with some of my popular colourways. I've got, this is I Wanna Dance. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is uh, a speckled colourway uh, with pink, it's like a neon pink, and then um, turquoise green speckles with some neon yellow as well. And that's quite popular, and I really like this one. This is my colours. Um, I've also got another popular one, which is Taste the Rainbow. So this is neons again. Um, but six, so they're in rainbow order, so it will kind of look rainbowish as you knit it. Um, and that's quite a popular one again, apparently, people like neons. Um, I've also got this, which is this one's Winter Wonderland, so this one is um, shades of blue, the darker is quite purpley. And then where it's lighter, it's it's a more like more baby blue, um, and then it's got speckles in navy blue and pink. Uh, so that's quite a popular one, and I also quite like it with this one, which is purple rain. So this is shades of purple. Um, so it goes to there's a little bit of white. Um, and then there's like a dark purple down to lilac and it's got blue and pink speckles um, I quite like this one as well um, I've also got a few samples um, I've got a knitted up shawl in my pastel rainbow set which I will go through in a minute so I use five colours I've got ten colours in my pastel rainbow um, it's not a set, you can buy them individually. Uh, so I started with apple green and then this next shade is aqua and then I blended it into sky blue which is that one and then baby blue and the last colour there is lilac um, and I really like how they work together so I wanted to do like a set that worked through the rainbow that you could mix and match. So I've got baby pink which is pale pink with purple and yellow speckles and then the next colour is apricot which is a pale orange with pink and yellow speckles. The next one is sunshine so that's a golden yellow with um, orange, no pink and yellow speckles, but they look a bit, they mix together a bit to look a bit orange. And then I've got another yellow, so I've got citrus, and that one is uh, a more lemon yellow. You can see the difference, I think, there, with orange and green speckles. And then it goes to apple green which is a pale green with blue and yellow speckles and then the next colour is aqua which is a pale turquoisey green with green and turquoise speckles so these are two that I used in the shawl uh, sky blue is the next one I used and that is uh, like a turquoise blue with blue and purple speckles uh, there's three more so this one is baby blue um, which is a more purpley blue and there's pink and blue speckles in it and then there's lilac which is a pale bluey purple with purple and pink speckles and then the last one is pastel purple 
which is a pinky purple and that one's got more bluey purple and pink speckles um, and I really like them all together but I also like like not all of them together so these <sighs> these are the ones that I used in the shawl and I really like them together um, I've also dyed my little pony yarn uh, so I've only got the main six characters at the moment uh, they're all here but I've knitted up little samples of them so this one is Pinkie Pie so it's dark and light pink with a few blue and yellow speckles uh, and there's also you're going to have to excuse the ends because I haven't sewn in any ends <laughs> there's Rarity which is white and purple and then there's a few turquoise speckles There's also Rainbow Dash, which is a turquoise blue, and then uh, it works through the rainbow as well. Um, and a Fluttershy, uh, tangled. This one's pink and yellow, a really pale pink and yellow, with some turquoise greeny blue speckles in the yellow. And there's also Applejack, which is orange and yellow, like a peachy orange and yellow. And there's a few red speckles. And the last one is Twilight Sparkle, uh, which is a pinky lilac and then navy, darker purple and hot pink for like the mane. And there are a few pink speckles as well in the lilac. Obviously if you were to knit them in the round you'd get a different pattern than this um, but it gives you an idea I think. I do a, a yarn the colours of my logo so the turquoise and the purple. Uh, this is what it looks like I'm not sure if you can see the difference in the colour. This is what it looks like knitted up though uh, so it kind of micro stripes in turquoise and lilac and I really like that and then there's a few navy and a few pink speckles as well. Uh, that's this one in the skein and I like that combination too. I also have um, quite a few mini skeins, I do three sizes. I have more 20 gram ones. So these are some 20 gram ones. Um, to give an idea, this is a sparkly one, I don't know if that's going to show up, but these are 20 gram size. I also do 10 grams and 5 grams, so they're quite good for if you want to, to try out the colour, if you're not sure how it, it's going to look, or for the things like the memory blankets. So these are some pastel rainbow colours, these are the 10 gram ones. Uh, to give you a size comparison. So on the sock, the four ply, you get about 40 metres in 10 grams. Uh, and then I've also got five gram ones. And I think they're really cute. Here they are. Uh, that's more pastel rainbow colours again. I've got, I tried to do the pastel rainbow uh, minis as well. And I sell them in sets when I have them in stock. So that's the difference with the 5 and the 10, and there's the 20 as well. So you can see the difference, but the 5 grams are quite popular. I think people, I think you get about one square of like a cosy memories blanket type. So there's about 20 meters on 5 grams, which is good for the little scrappy projects. Um, and that's quite good. I, quite, I think they're quite good. Um, so I think that's it for now. Um, the website is glendalefibers.com and I'm hoping to run a sale probably for June because that's the anniversary month that will mark two years. So there should be a sale on. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm on Instagram as Glendale Fibers. I've got a Facebook page as well, which is also Glendale Fibers. And that's it. So, 
Thank you for watching if you've got this far. Welcome back to Instasia, I'm Emma and today we're going to be doing a QA. and a I've got questions right here so let's jump right into it. Question 1. Do you have a baby range? Yes. Four ply baby jumpers. Not to five years, super cute. Because everything is super cute. <laughs> Question two. How long have you been knitting? Too long. Just, just stop. <laughs> um, six years. But uh, shown how to knit by my friend Danielle and haven't stopped since. Which is your favourite chat? Favourite chat is Wheatley. This is Wheatley. She's my favourite chat. Look at the camera. She looks so pretty. You're not impressed? Never impressed. <laughs> Bobbins or balls? This person means when you knit with Intasia, you can have bobbins all across or you can have whole balls. And the whole balls can make a whole lot of mess. So you want to use long strings of yarn, not little wound up pieces of yarn because all the bobbins get all tangled up as well and then you have to undo them all and it's really annoying. So yeah, just measure out a really long length of yarn and use that. When you want to undo it, just pull and it's undone. Fantastic. Have you actually knitted all those charts? No, these are not real. These are fake. <laughs> Um, the name charts, I didn't knit all of them because I don't know that many people. Why does the digital chart come with a pattern? I don't need this again. I get this question all the time. I sell the majority of my patterns on Love Knitting and on Love Knitting you can't sell charts just as charts. You have to include a pattern. So I include usually the four ply baby jumper but sometimes I include the DK jumper or my adult jumper. I would charge the same amount no matter if the pattern was included or not. How many chunky sweaters have you knitted? Let's find out. Christmas doggy jumper for my boyfriend. Dragon jumper for my boyfriend. Plain display sweater for me. Unicorn jumper for me. This one is the geometric panda, also for me. <laughs> Christmas polar bear, overly tinselly for me. Christmas wreath, also for me, because you can't ever have too much tinsel. <laughs> A tinsel zebra for my mother. A black cat for my brother. And that is all of the chunky jumpers in the house. I think I did three for it now and one penguin jumper for my brother. Is it better to fair aisle? No, never fair aisle. So you would have to carry the white from here all the way over to here. And that's going to be a big carry. And that'll make your picture look really gaffy. So the best thing to do is intarsia. And that's where you drop the white there, pick up with the red, carry on with the red, get a new piece of green, a little bit of green, and then a brand new ball of white. Do not use the same ball of white. So yeah, intarsia, don't fair aisle. Uh, do you have a DK pattern? Yes. This is the two to 13 year old DK jumper. I think this is the third or fourth size. And he's a little Christmas jumper because he's so cute. Do you have accessories? Yes, I have a tea bag hat in adult and baby 
the baby one can go with your baby jumper pattern and make a really cute set because baby clothes are cute and I also have a cowl the cowl is knitted flat it is not knitted in the round because I can't knit in the round for sausage when you knit it like this with the, pic with the chart on the side and then when you finish it magically becomes the right way up so clever so good then the inside is just using any of the leftover contrast shades so I could have done black I could have done another ball of orange but I went with the white but do you have crochet patterns? I have one crochet pattern because I don't know how to crochet very well but I know how to do double crochet, triple crochets and slip stitches so I made a corner to corner crochet blanket. Um, this is a four ply size corner to corner crochet blanket and I am beginner so I did a striped chart to go with it. Um, this is that chart knitted but the great thing about corner to corner crochet is if you knit it in a thicker yarn, so this is Aran, you end up with a huge, huge blanket. So this would be great on your sofa. Brilliant. So yes, you can do that with any of my charts and the dimensions are all laid out in the pattern. The yarn amounts are given in the pattern and they are given in microscopic grams. So each little square has been estimated and you can work out exactly how much of each contrast shade you need. It's all in the pattern. It's fantastic. I spent hours on that. <laughs> Do you have Facebook? All on my website. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. How long does it take to knit a jumper? Depends on the size of the jumper. Baby, newborn size, a couple of days. Biggest adult size? 3XL, um, weak, thick yarn, you've also got to think thicker wool knits quicker so if you're using a big chunky yarn you're going to spend the same amount of time that you'd spend on a 13 year old DK jumper and people love knitting with DK, you might as well knit a big chunky jumper for yourself. Favourite animal, if you look at my charts it's owl. I have five owl patterns. I have a blue owl, I have a pink owl, I have the Christmas owls, I have a silhouette owl and I have an owl face. And I have a cat face, I have Wheatley and I have Biscuit. Is she on? No, she's off screen. <laughs> no. I, I obviously love owls. <laughs> Did I see one of your patterns in a magazine? I've had several patterns published in Knit Now magazine. You can see when I have a new pattern available in a magazine on my website. I always like to write a little blog about it. So that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and let me know if you want another one of these. Bye! That'd be really nice. Cause everything's nice and everything's cute and nothing is awful. What is the worst part of knitting? Sewing up. I didn't start the knitting so I could sew. Let's stop the video.
I'm a Tory and I'm from Little Red Pottery and I made hand drawn Stonway yarn balls here in the studio in Buff Island. Um, now, if you've never heard of a yarn ball before, the idea is, is that you place your yarn inside here and any kind of tools, knitting needles, this kind of thing um, that you want to have. Think of it as kind of like a caddy for your yarn and then you can pull the yarn through using um, either the holes or the hooks on the front of the piece and it keeps the yarn in place rather than rolling about all over the floor and then having to chase it after the cat and all this kind of thing. So they're quite handy to have um, and ours come in a variety of different styles and different colours for you to choose from. Let's go on a quick tour of the studio. So you can see here's one wheel, that's my wheel, and then this is my dad's wheel, so that's where he works. And then we've got a whole bunch of uh, biscuit fired yarn balls waiting to be coloured. So they glaze to order. Uh, when we get an order from our website, we just glaze them in any of the colours from our current colour chart. So this is the kiln room and I've got a bunch of pots here waiting to be biscuit fired. So they're just going to dry out for a little bit longer. And these actually are the uh, named yarn balls. So you can see I carve a name into them. Now I actually have three kilns in the kiln room. This first one's actually still on right now, so it's quite hot. Um, and then we have a different middle shaped one and then another tall one here at the back. Now I know online it's very difficult to tell the size of an object, but these are quite substantial, um, these large ones. And I also do smaller yarn balls. Now I don't have any um, actually completed, but these are star yarn balls. So as you can see, they have a completely different shape and um, a hook at the front, which has a little star carved onto it here. Um, now generally I recommend that these star ones are for small balls of yarn or lightweight yarn and the larger ones can hold anything up to a double knit iron or even a chunky weight yarn so they are a good size. So the wool yarn balls that are currently available in the shop sell for £33.20. The discontinued style ones these are £27.20. You can also find customised yarn balls in the shop for £37.20. So you can find these um, on Etsy, which is etsy.com forward slash Little Red Pottery, or you can find uh, our own website, which is littleredpottery.co.uk. If you would like to get in touch with me, um, then you can do on Instagram, of course, um, I'm just Little Red Pottery on there or at studio at littleredpottery.co.uk. There are loads of ways to get in touch, so um, just drop me a line if you would like to, to work with me or if you have some sort of questions about the ordering process, um, this kind of thing. And uh, I'll see you hopefully next year at World Monty. So thank you so much. Hello. Thanks for stopping by my stall. I'm Max and this is my wonderful world of woolly goods. I make jewellery for knitters, crafters, crocheters and I've been doing that since 2009. Also, knit moths. This is a fun project that I started in 2014 when I made one and then another one and I had a small exhibition at a yarn shop called Prick Your Finger. Since then I've made over 60 different species they're all based on real life moths and there's so many colours and patterns I don't know when I will stop. You can get them in frames, printed on cards and on all sorts of jewellery pieces. So these are all my brooches. Firstly let's have a look at the British wool pins. These uh, come in either a crochet hook or knitting needles. The colours are all made from Shetland wool and then I've got some natural sheep shades including Blue Faith Leicester, Black Cross Mountain, Lovely Local Wensleydale and Jacob Sheep. The back of them is a simple brooch clasp and they come on a recycled backing card with the name of the sheep handwritten on. These brooches are made with laser cut wood and then hand stitched yarn that goes through the holes. The yarn is hand dyed by Travel Knitter 
and it is 50% baby camel and 50% silk which makes it super shiny. The back has a lovely standard brooch pin on it and these cards are also recycled. These are my enamel pins. They're lovely and shiny and they come in two colourways, the pastels and the super brights. There's only a few pastels left so you better be quick. These are my wooden moth brooches. They're made of laser cut wood with a maple veneer. They're lovely and shiny and you get a lot of detail from the knitting. The larger ones have a brooch pin back and you also get the name of the moth at the bottom. The smaller ones just have a standard pin clasp and these are super cute and they're brand new. These are my teeny tiny knitting earrings. Some of them have a bit of sparkle in but they're all made from hand wound wool with silver plated teeny tiny knitting needles. And these are on the recycle card again. Over here we have the slate grey which is super popular and very classy for the fashionable knitter. Or you can go really bright with some of my other colours, yellow, orange or pink, pink, pink. These are my dangly knitting earrings. These were the first ever design I made. You can have them with either knitting needles or crochet hook. The crochet hook is laser cut and varnished and they hang on a lovely string of shiny beads. And the wool is hand wound again and a lot of it is hand dyed by me because I love my favourite colours. Here are the crochet hook earrings. They're laser cut from either walnut wood, pink acrylic or gold or silver mirror for the super shiny bling earring. And they have a lovely hook on the end, just like the real thing, which is perfect if you've got an emergency dropped stitch. So now let's look at my necklaces. These mini skeins are super cute, teeny tiny little skeins. They're really squishy and soft. And again, they're made with Tanami by Travel Knitter, which is a hand dyed 50% baby camel and 50% silk for the softness and the shine. The chains are lovely plated gun metal and they have a second loop in them so you can have two different lengths if you want to wear two at once and have them sit nicely. The next necklace is my laser cut series. I've got knitters and crocheters. The knitter comes in two sizes and it's made from either walnut wood, shiny silver acrylic, shiny gold or a lovely bright pink. You might have seen this pink knitter necklace in the recent book called Warm Hands by Kate Davies and Jeanette Sloan with a bunch of lovely knitting patterns for different kinds of gloves. These are my last type of necklace. They are the moths and they're printed onto a laser cut clear acrylic. It's lovely and shiny and you get a lot of detail of the knitting in there. And again, I've put the name of each moth onto the card so you know exactly which species you're getting. Welcome to the category of hand knitted moths. I've got my framed moth. The mini ones are super cute and come in a frame and most of them are additions. And then the larger ones, massive moths. These are all hand knitted on 2.25 millimeter needles. And you can find these on printed onto greetings cards and also onto some hair clips. These are the framed mini moths. I've got a lovely beautiful marbled, which in real life actually has a lot of different colour variation. So I've made three different versions of this one. And then the blue tiger moth, which is an African moth, has lots of sparkles in it. The muslin footman and the wood tiger are both UK moths. And you can see the lovely tiny stitches and I also do the labels with the common name and the Latin name. Here's a selection of the greetings cards. This is the Death's Head Hawk Moth, which is very popular in 
pop culture, particularly from the silence of the lambs poster, Spanish moon moth with its lovely stained glass effect, Madagascan sunset moth, look at all the colours, when I knitted that, one row had 16 colours in it. The Atlas moth here is one of the largest moths in the world. And you can see down here, all three of these are UK moths. You might find them in your garden. So now we have the moth hair clips. These have got a clip on the back, nice and secure. And they're printed on a really cool fabric that is made from recycled plastic bottles. Got lots of different moth designs and they're really smart take a look at how cool you could be hi my name's libby i'm the dyer behind needle and thread you can normally find me rocking all orange at a yarn show but today we're going to show you a little bit from my home in Manchester where I hand dye all of my yarns. We'll look at some colourways and my different bases and I'll show off a few samples. This is a selection of my repeatable colourways. I carry every weight from lace weight mohair and surrey alpaca through to a chunky merino, but blue face Lester is really my favourite. So going from left to right, we've got Honey Badger, La Vion Rose, Rose Mould, Psychedelic Relic, That Dress, and on the end is Marmalady on the Merino DK. So then as we go down from right to left, we've got your turning violet and you can see that's one of my fluffy lace weight bases there on the Surrey alpaca then we've got resting beach face <laughs> um there is break in at tiffany's on the merino singles which is fabulous for shawls you're teeling my heart on merino chunky i'll show you a sample of that just in just a second got Swamp Monster on BFL DK and Poison Apple on BFL Nylon Sock. So these are my sock samples that you'd normally be able to see if you came to a show. It gives you a little bit of an idea how some of the colours knit up. I mostly only do samples for the kind of variegated colourways. So these are some of my garment samples. This is the Mellow Kitty sweater by Casa Pinka. You can find the pattern on Ravelry. And I have put together kits for this colour combination. And what I've done with the kits to make them more accessible and affordable is the contrast colours that you're seeing here. Even for the largest size, you only need up to a maximum of 50 grams per colourway of the contrast. So everything except the purple. So I've done kits with 50 grams of the contrast colourways just to keep the cost down a little bit for you. All you have to do is select how many main skeins you needed and then you'll be able to check out. Uh, I personally used, I think, two and a little bit. I'm not entirely sure. And I made the 44 inch bust size. There's images of it on me on my Instagram if you want to go and check that out. It's at Needle and Fred. So this is another one of my favourite sweaters. It's the Ursa U-R-S-A by Jacqueline Cieslack. Again, you can find the pattern on Ravelry. This sample is done in my Merino Chunky yarn. And that is that one right there. And um, so this is applied yarn um, knits from anywhere from like 6 to 10 millimeter needles. The sample I think I did on 6.5 millimeter needles and this particular size again somewhere around 44 inch bust which is my size um, took I think four and a half skeins. 
I do like my jumpers cropped, so I just bear that in mind. Uh, I have quite a few sweater quantities of junky yarn on the website because I get a lot of questions about this sample. It's a lovely raglan construction and it's got just these little squishy half brioche seams, uh, sorry, details, which is a lot easier than it sounds because it's kind of fake brioche. You're just slipping stitches effectively. Um, yeah, great beginner pattern, really, if you've kind of got any knitting knowledge. Um, Jacqueline's patterns are wonderful. They're very size inclusive and they're really clear. But if for any reason you want more yarn than is in stock, you can always message me, I'll put together a custom order, or quite a few of the yarns on site will also say that they can be back ordered, and all that means is that I will dye it up especially for you, so you can get as much as you need for the project. Hi everyone, I'm Charlie from Noodle Soup Yarns and I'm here um, doing the wool monty at home, sadly. Um, <laughs> obviously would have loved to have met all of you in person and given you big squishy yarn hugs but it is what it is. It will be on next year and I very much look forward to vending there, uh, to vending at the Fly DSA Arena with the wool monty gang. Yeah, but in the meantime we are here in my spare room, which is now known as the yarn room because the yarn has absolutely taken over everything. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. My um, my husband's not too chuffed, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so there's a few things that I wanted to show you today. Um, off the top of my head, I will tell you before because I will forget. My website is noodlesoupshop.co.uk and my Instagram is at noodlesoupyarns. Um, you can search me on Facebook under Noodle Soup Yarns as well if you're not already following me. I'll be posting lots of brand new one of a kind skeins this weekend um, because I haven't dyed them yet, they're not here to show. <laughs> uh, as I'm filming this on the 4th of June and I will be dyeing everything this coming weekend um, for the Warm Monty. So you'll be seeing lots of new stuff as well as all of the lovely repeatable colourways that I have here. So I wanted to focus on some of the bases that I have in stock um, because different bases can hold colour and, and um, absorb colour so differently from each other. So they're obviously the same colourway but you can see where there's a bit of a difference. So the first one I want to show you is grunge. trying to get them all in one hand all right so here we go here's three skeins of grunge and they look very very similar but as you can see with that wine red it's really shown up really really well on the merino um merino sparkle a merino nylon sparkle sorry and that one in the middle is 100 percent superwash merino which drinks color but as you can see it's not quite as bright and this one at the end here this is BFL. It's 100% BFL um, superwash. And it's, I mean, all three of these bases I love, but I love them for different things. And I'll get into that in a minute. But um, yeah, as you can see, they look similar, but they've all taken the colour very slightly differently. And again, we have Vivid Firmament now. And this is, this, I love this colourway. Um, this always makes me think of um, like a sunset against a really dark silver stormy sky. Um, so this one here on the left, <laughs> I think, on the left. Uh, it's, sorry, everything's backwards on my camera, so I'm really not sure. Uh, this one is 100% superwash merino, uh, super merino, no nylon. This is my foot-free squish base. And this one is 75-25, um, 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% Lurex. So it's got that lovely sparkle in it. But as you can see, it's taken the colour very slightly differently. So this silver, I don't know if it's showing up too well in person, um, on camera, sorry. But in person, you can tell the slight difference. So the silvery, that silver in the um, sparkle 
is just a little bit lighter than the it's almost like a stormy grey and the 100% merino so yeah different bases take colour differently and um, getting back to the BFL um, which I have over there on Viva Firmament but it's a bit too far to reach right now um, BFL is absolutely gorgeous it takes colour like a dream but it takes a lot less to have um, that full saturation so merino especially the sparkle will take so much dye to look half as vibrant as this so i have to be quite careful when i'm trying to when i'm trying to dye colorways that look the same on different bases and sometimes um sometimes that's what you want sometimes you want the different bases to look completely different sometimes you don't so like I say, this is grunge, 100% BFL um, superwash. It's, I'd recommend this, this is fingering weight. I'd recommend BFL for socks. If you don't like nylon in your socks, um, I would just use maybe a 2.25 or maybe even a 2 mil needle. I'm currently making some socks on 100% BFL with um, 2 mil needles and it's taking a while, but um, mostly because I haven't actually worked on them. <laughs> for a good fortnight at least uh, probably longer um but yes the two mil needles can take a little while but the gauge is absolutely glorious and i just want to show you a quick sample of what uh, what grunge looks like knit up because it's a lovely variegated yarn and lots of people ask so this um is the very beginnings of a ripple bralette by jessie may um i'm absolutely loving knitting this um yeah, this is in grunge on my 100% super, uh, superwash merino base. And I absolutely love the variegation in it. I love the pooling. I love everything about this. This, this is a very soothing knit for me right now. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. So, um, yeah, I think I've shown off um, a lot of these here on the top are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, standard sock yarn. Um, but it's, I, I think because of the ply, it really takes quite a lot to pill. Now I'm not saying it's pill proof, it's not pill proof, no wool is pill proof. But um, I have socks that I knit on a 2.25 gauge. Put the knitting down, shall I? I have socks that I knit uh, in 2 mil and 2.25 and 2.5 even that after a year's worth of wearing are only just starting to get a little bit pilly. Um, so that's great. I'd highly recommend that if you want it for, um, for shawls, but not sort of really warm shawls. If you want it with a slight, uh, with a little bit more cooler. Ugh. <laughs> Apologies. If you want shawls that are a little bit cooler, I'd recommend the sock yarn because once it's washed and blocked, it's actually a lot dry, uh, a lot um, softer. <laughs> it's a lot softer than you might think. So I recommend giving that a try. If you don't like nylon at all, um, I would give BFL. Is this BFL? It is BFL. Uh, <laughs> I'd give the BFL blend um, a go. Uh, right, what else is there to show? Ah, another different blend of sock yarn I have is the 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon um, soft sock sets I have. And I have some of these rainbow sets, some of them are in um, gradients. And I've left those over there, so... Oops. But yeah, I've got some pastel rainbow sets and... Some radiant rainbow sets and also yeah like I say some gradients they all come with a little black mini scale as well for, for a nice contrast because I, I feel like that gives um, you don't then have to choose one of the other colors to be the heels or toes or cuffs you can just knit the whole thing as a tube and then add your afterthought heels in afterwards and not worry about it um, one of the other things, and one of my more favourite things to knit with, not necessarily to dye, and other dyers I'm sure will know why, is 
is uh, self-striping yarn. So I have a small selection of self-striping. Um, I won't be dyeing any more of it this week, but I will be doing some for Halloween shortly. Because obviously, self-striping Halloween yarn is the best thing. Um, yeah, so I've got plenty of self-striping. And like I say, um, sorry, a small amount of self-striping. Um, yeah, so that's just a short, a really short uh, bite-sized chunk of the colourways that I have in stock. This one is Rise of the Jellyfish, that's one of my favourites to dye, um, and there are lots of pictures of that online, but I better wrap this up. So thank you very much for watching, again my website is noodlesoupshop.co.uk, I am uh, Noodle Soup Yarns on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, yeah look out for my posts this weekend on the Wall Monty and um, the Wall Monty at Home, or Monty at Home hashtag, uh, I will post about it so I'm more sure. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining me. Bye. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Can someone? Yeah. Okay. The Adam's nodding. I have the cameraman again today. So I decided. <laughs> when can you wear a skein crown if not today? So that's what I'm doing. Um, if you go on the hashtag skein crown, you can see loads of examples and how to do it. That's just by the by. So, da da. This is the store for today. And I'll talk a little bit about the silk in a second and all these wonderful things. And I think we're going to start with the sock yarn today. So, and again, just type comments. Adam can read them out to me if you've got questions or you want to go slower or, you know, anything. So I think we'll start with this with a different one as an example. It's smooth. It's super soft, but it's really durable for socks. This one is called Clown College. That's been quite popular. Um, and then we have, oh yes, and then we have this one, which is called Surprise Rainbows. It's beautiful. Um, and I did steal a skein for myself, which I can show you. I'm not that far with knitting it, but this is what it looks like knitted up. And the reason why I named it Surprise Rainbow is because when I was knitting this up, I actually had a little speckled rainbow appear. That's that one. And it's super soft and really, really great for socks. But it's also great for tops and shawls and jumpers and cardigans and everything. Um, and then I've got mini skeins on the website that go with most of these. This is a really pretty one. This is Greta the Gremlin. Or Greta Gremlin. Um, Zuzu. It's a pink one. Lapland, personally, one of my faves as well. It's got really nice purple speckles. And then I've got some mini skeins that kind of go with that or contrast, depending on what you what you want to do there. And in case you're wondering how this stuff looks knitted up, I showed you that one example, but there's a general rule of thumb. You look at how long the colour is on a thread. I did this last time as well, and a few people sent me messages saying that was really helpful. You look at how long a bit of colour is on the thread and then think, how many stitches is that going to be? So this is going to be three or four stitches. So you'll have three or four stitches of speckles and then you'll have four or five or six blue ones. So that's kind of how you work out how um, something will look. And this one, this is a new one. It's fairy ribbons. And don't, don't ask me why I call it fairy ribbon. It just sort of came into my head, usually when I'm drinking gin. Um, <laughs> so that's what fairy ribbons looks like. So these are all the sock yarn. There is some more sock yarn than what you see here on the website. I just didn't have room to put it all out. Um, and speaking of fairy ribbons, we'll move over to the baby alpaca. Silk and cashmere blends. I've got loads of this. This is all four ply. I've got some double knit as well. I've got more colorways than you see here on the website. I just kind of picked and chose for today. And I've got the fairy ribbons on baby alpaca as well. And you can see the difference. It's just, it's more muted, it's more pastel because the alpaca takes the, the colours differently, but it's really pretty. And then one thing to talk about today, the eagle-eyed will have spotted this. This is Uma, U-M-A as in Uma Thurman, Kill Bill. Um, and I've got quite a few skeins on the website if you want to make this. This is my version of the um, Flax Light. Fighting can knits and I altered it to make it cropped and to give myself short sleeves and I love this and this yarn is really really good um, to make tops with actually because it's 
see if you can it's really light and really airy it has a really nice drape normally it shows i'd be going touch me touch me stroke me can't do that right now so i'll stroke myself for you um but yeah it's great for thin summery tops um a lot of you also liked last time that i kind of showed you which ones would go together so this is mrs patmore and tiffany aching witch they look fab together um oh and this one is also really nice so one question yes how many skeins would you need for that top for this top um i think i used two and a half skeins <clears throat> And I'm a size 12 to 14. Um, yeah, roughly about that. But have a look what it says in the pattern. These skeins are all 400 meters on 100 grams. And the pattern will tell you how many meters you need per size. Tink Hanets is really good like that in her descriptions. Hope that helps. Um, and then we've got this one. It's called Glow, which is just really, really pretty. And Glow, you could pair with that. You could pair it with the brown. Pair it with the gray. And if you look, the way when depending on what you pair it with, the, the variegated change the ha, variegated skein just changes temperature, changes the way it looks, it's lovely. Personally, I quite like that. That one's glow, this one is ibis, and that one's November mornings, which I'm also wearing on my face. And also don't worry, these skeins are mine for a project, they're not going back in the top. And we've got these, what else have we got that's new? Ah yes. So this one, people went a bit nuts over, even while it was still in the dye pan. This one is called Coven, as in like a witch's coven. I don't know if you say Coven or Coven, but you know what I mean. So this one, if you want to do a close up, is green and speckly and purple and really rather wonderful. And that will also go with spun gold. It'll go with feathers really nicely. This one's called Feathers. Go with Business Padmore. So... You can see that I've got a colour palette, so a lot of skeins will go with each other generally. This one's um, Aurora. That's really nice as well. So I don't know if you can film a bit down here. This one is a new one as well called Treasures. That's really pretty. That goes with feathers as well. This one is Unicorn Addict. Um, this one is also a charity colour why I'm donating um, money from these skeins to Stonewall UK, which is an LGBTQ plus charity, I believe. Um, so those are the full ply alpaca ones. Is there any questions or anything? Uh, just uh, ask for your website and yes. ask around what bases these are. Okay, so these bases are baby alpaca silk and cashmere, and my website is northshireyarns.co.uk. Um, the sock yarn that we saw before is blue faced Leicester wool and nylon, which is a good sock base. Um, show you this as well quickly, just eyeing at the time but we're good this is the find your fade by andrea Mori that i made years ago um most of these colorways i don't have anymore this shawl is more just to show you how lovely it is and the drape and it's so soft um people tend to cuddle it a lot at shows so it's just this yarn is wonderful for tops for shawls for beanies anything there's a request to see the top that's in the on the Yes, I'm getting this one yep. or that one. Uh, that one, I think. That one. Really. Um, I'm getting to that. It's actually my next, <clears throat> my next thing. So this one is the Trescao sweater by Anna Delvaux, which I've made a few of now. Um, and it says it explains in the pattern as well. It's a skein of full ply and a skein of mohair lace, which then kind of knits up like a double knit, which is quite quite good because it's super quick to knit. Um, so that's that. Another question. Yes. Have you dyed a special colorway for this event? Yes, I have. I will go over that again at the end. I did show it earlier, but I'll show it you in a minute. Um, so, yeah, this is what the mohair looks like knitted up. And it's super cuddly. It's not itchy or scratchy at all because the mohair is blended with silk. So it's really, really nice. And I'll show you the mohair I've got. Oh. Let's look up and look at the time, but we're still good. So... I have a limited range of mohair, um, but they kind of all go together. <laughs> so you could just use all of these together. <laughs> um, this one is a new one, which is called Keep Going, which I felt quite apt for the moment. I dyed this a week ago, I think, and it was just sunny outside and I just needed some happy rainbows. So there's these ones. And then you could 
So, yeah. can you tell us again who made your jumper, please? My signal dropped off. Um, yeah, the jumper... Hi, I'm Abby from Orchidian Luxury Yarns. Um, I'm coming to you from my wool shed in West London because we can't be face to face um, this year. So I just want to talk to you about some of the products that I've got for sale. Um, I've got lots of hand dyed yarns. Um, I've split them up into four ply and other. Um, so my four plies are, I've got a Malverino, um, which is 50-50 uh, merino and silk. And then I've got uh, a sock yarn, which is platinum sock. So this is Let There Be More Light, which is my most popular colorway and is actually available in, I think, all of my yarns, all of the bases. Um, and then platinum sock's got 25% nylon. Uh, so it's, it's extra strong for um, making socks. Um, then I've got um, two silk yarns. They're both lace weight, but this is a three ply and it comes in lots of different variegated um, colorways. And then I've got a two ply, which is lo in lots of semi-solid colors. Um, and they're really good for summer knits or you can combine them with a four ply um, to knit up as a DK. And then I've got um, some cashmere, pure cashmere yarns. Um, which are, these are my um, Schwede sets. So they're gradient sets. Um, each skein is, they're like mathematical gradients and each skein is 25 grams. Um, so they're 125 in a set. And then I've got some kits. This is uh, my Eiffel Tower jumper that I designed. And um, I'm also wearing one that was made with a four ply and a DK. And I've got lots of different DK yarns dyed up um, for you to knit that in. Um, so those are my kits that are available. Um, so come and have a look around my shop. Uh, if you've got any questions, please get in touch. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, bye. Morning all. Uh, I thought I would show you a little bit of my village in Tideswell, uh, which is in the Glorious Peak District um, and is a great inspiration for a lot of my yarn colourways. So I thought I'd give you a taste of my commute to work. So this is my house and I'm just going to turn the phone round and you can see what comes next. So that's the local pub. A nice short walk if it was open, sadly not at the moment because of coronavirus. And this is my road, typical Peak District Village. Um, let's head down here, which is through to the most amazing church that uh, you will find in the Peak District. It's known as the Cathedral of the Peak mainly because it's absolutely huge and I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it on my little phone. See that? Massive. Uh, built in 1400 or something. Um, got the most amazing stained glass windows, which sadly you can't really see today because it's so over, um, so cloudy. Um, anyway, this is the churchyard and very lush and green. Thankfully we had some rain last night. Um, and Tideswell itself has been absolutely fabulous during the lockdown. Uh, we've had loads and loads of um, activities for kids, obviously happening socially distanced uh, and typically in family groups. Um, this is one of them just coming up. This is Sydney the snake. You just see it on the left hand side there. So you take a pebble, you take it home, you paint it and then you bring it back and pop it with the rest of them. And obviously the NHS is appearing on a lot of the stones. Isn't that great? Anyway, this is the main centre of the village. Uh, we've got a great second-hand bookshop just down there. A gift shop. That's my friend Pete. Say hi, Pete. Hi. Morning. And then we have Tyndall's the Bakers. And so we carry on up the road. It's a bit busy this morning. More cars than usual. Clearly lockdown is lifting. Uh, 
um, a bit more of the church. Colour inspiration everywhere. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And I worked out yesterday, it's about an 800 step commute to the studio, which compared to my previous life, which was uh, working in business in London, which was four o'clock on a Monday morning, uh, it is a delight. Um, but the pub, sadly closed because of coronavirus. Um, hopefully we can get life back into them soon. Anyway, over there, is the studio. So I'm just going to cross over, avoid this chat with a beautiful Whippet. Hi Whippet! Clearly Whippet wants to play. Right, so here's the studio. Sadly closed but hopefully soon be open. If you visited the studio, you'll know the sound of that bell very well. Okay, so it's a little bit chaotic because as you can see, I'm preparing for uh, the Wool Monty. Big pile of labelling there. Um, and, oh, what's this? Uh, it's the Wool Monty mug from last year. Hopefully there'll be one for next year too. So just to take you into the back so you can see what we've got going. Showing a little bit of the preparation for Wool Monty. Um, there's a preponderance of orange. That may be the show special. And just to show you the inspiration for that, Henderson's Relish. Sheffielders will know exactly what I'm talking about. Non-Sheffielders won't have a clue, but I will educate you this weekend. Okay, that's it. That's more show specials in there. That's various bowls ready to go this morning. Um, and have a great Wool Monty at the weekend. And I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Sylvie and I am the dyer behind Phileas Yarns. Welcome to my little virtual trunk show for the virtual Monty this weekend. I should have been vending at the Wool Monty in Sheffield. Obviously this is not gonna happen. It isn't happening. So uh, I'm making this little video to show you some of my yarn and a bit what I do. Um, yeah, so I have my shop on Etsy, philiasyarns.etsy.com and uh, you can find me on social media, especially Instagram, uh, where I am at Sylvie underscore Phileas Yarns. I also have a podcast on YouTube, the Phileas podcast. And if you actually have been watching it already, you will recognize this decor. I am talking to you from my spare room, which is my craft room and which is where I store all of my yarn. Um, sort of like the stock room, if you like. Anyway, so let, let's start. Um, Phileas Yarns is, uh, I'm, I'm focusing on colors, uh, which I get from my travels. I'm very inspired by the world and my travels around the world. And, uh, and yeah, so the yarn bases are usually very wool, like sheepy wool orientated, like I have some superwash merino or some superwash blue fest lester, some sock yarn with nylon and this kind of thing This that are going to be sturdy and again in the spirit of traveling thing that you can throw in your suitcase that are not going to get damaged that you, you know you can be not too precious with because wool is a brilliant material it's very sturdy and reliable and yes yeah, superwash treatment will allow it to uh, maybe get lost in the laundry bag in some areas and still be okay however last year i decided to go for a little bit of a more luxurious yarn base 
This is a 50% Corydell, 50% mohair fingering yarn, which I have called Voyager fingering. And I'm holding some in my hand. I have chosen um, eight of your and my favorite colorways to start this base on. And look at this little bouquet. I will go through them different colors. This is Renis Fiara, inspired by a beach, black sand beach in Iceland. And I am wearing it so you can see how it knits up. This cardigan is the Morning Fog cardigan, which is in line of magazine issue two. And I only took 200 grams to knit this. I'm showing you here, sorry, I meant to say it. this is a 50 gram skein because this is perfect for sock as well as a yarn. But So they're available at 50 gram skeins, but also 100 gram skeins. Just so you know. Then another gray is Quai de Seine, which comes from Paris. This colorway is available for all the yarn bases that I have. So let me show you it to you this is in explorer sock so it's a superwash merino 80% 20% nylon and this is wanderlust for ply which is 100% blue fest luster in fingering weight so you can see how it looks differently in the yarns see there's some dk as well wanderlust dk or some explorer sport um then this is Among Friends. I do apologize if you can hear the cat. She's at the window behind you. Um, Among Friends, inspired by the ladies, the tribal ladies in the mountains of uh, North Vietnam in Sapa. And also, I mean, Among Friends is probably one of everybody's favorites. Uh, so it is obviously available in all the range of yarn bases. Here again in Explorer Sock, the Merino Nylon base, and in Wanderlust for ply, which is 100% Blue Fest Luster. Here we are Fjord, inspired by the beautiful turquoise water in the fjords in Scandinavia. And again, a huge favorite. So much so that actually at the time I'm filming this, which is a little bit in advance of the show, I have quite, um, I, I need to dye it in all the bases and getting pretty scarce on the stock in this color. But here, here it is on the Wanderlust DK. So it's 100% blue fest luster, like the four ply, but this is a thicker one, the DK. And this is the, this is the Explorer sock, which is obviously is the same as the Explorer, uh, Explorer Sport, which is the same as Explorer sock, but a bit thicker. Sport weight is a funny base. Um, I do like it. I'm currently, my, work's in pro my work in progress is in sport weight, uh, the Trove a pullover from a pompon magazine and absolutely love it so you may have if you want some sport you may have to dig into the die to order section uh, because it's a little bit of one of these ones that I'm not sure if I should die in advance or not it, it kind of comes and goes then a bit of green with Acropolis from the famous hill in Athens I do like this green it's a bit of a yellowy and dark green different shade and here we have it in the sock yarn export sock and this is wanderlust dk blue fest Lester. and you can see how the color looks quite a bit different depending on the yarn so i like to show you the different bases For the mustard lovers, this is what W80, which means temple in uh, well Thai, I guess. Well, at least in Thailand, they all call all the temples are called what. 
and uh, obviously I was inspired by all the golden features in the Thai temples for this color. And again, this is available in many old uh, range of yarn bases for the semi solids. Is that it? Yeah, that's Explorer Sock. And this is one the last four ply. This is gorgeous. Sunshine in the yarn. Here we have La Cabane à Sucre which is inspired by the sugar houses in, Car in Canada and uh, all the little yummy maple syrup that is produced there. Again, available across all the ranges like Explorer Sock and this is It Won the Last DK. That's the DK. Here we are. And the eighth color that this Corridor Mohair Voyager Fingerings available is this, uh, I'm sorry, very bright on the camera, Scent Expedite. Scent Expedite is, uh, it comes from folklore, let's say, from uh, Reunion Island uh, in the Indian Ocean, which is where my sister lives. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is a bit of an obscure one, inspiration, but I do love it. And again, available, my God, this is absolutely <laughs> blowing the camera. I don't know if you heard, but red is usually very tricky to photograph. I can, you know, you can probably see why now. This is a 